Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. In today's video, I'm going to talk more about the strange cases of people disappearing in our wilderness areas. Stories of people vanishing without a trace are becoming more and more common, and these stories have been made even more prominent in the Missing 411 book series and documentary films by David Polites. Now we're going to dive into this topic right away, but first I have a message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is a sleek, durable, minimalist wallet that is perfect for your everyday carry loadout. They make it in aluminum, carbon fiber, and titanium. I got mine in the aluminum version in OD green because I think it looks the coolest. And mine also has a money clip on it. However, because I hate having things in my pockets all together, wearing out my pants, I actually just clip the Ridge Wallet right onto my belt and keep it out of the way and it stays on there quite securely. The Ridge Wallet is RFID blocking, has a lifetime warranty, and can hold up to 12 cards. You need to get rid of that ugly folding leather dad wallet that's overflowing with cards and receipts and crap you don't need and you need to pick up a Ridge Wallet. If you go to ridge.com slash mountainbeast and use promo code mountainbeast, you can get 10% off and free worldwide shipping. That's ridge.com slash mountainbeast, promo code mountainbeast. There's a link down below in the description. Stories of missing people are relevant to the Bigfoot topic because Bigfoot is one of the main theories as to what is responsible for these people going missing. The most prevalent of these cases is the Dennis Martin case from back in the late 60s. Dennis, a young boy who was visiting the Great Smoky Mountains National Park with his family, had suddenly vanished late one afternoon after hiding in some bushes to try and surprise some of the adults in their group. After not seeing Dennis for no more than five minutes, the group began searching for him, but he was gone. He vanished without a trace. Now the interesting thing about the Dennis Martin case is that at one point during the search to find him, another family had claimed to hear a blood-curdling scream, and not long after that had seen what looked like a disheveled man moving quickly through the woods and along a road. Now some versions of the story tell of the man having what looked like a young child on his back. But what makes the story even weirder is that the man apparently ran into a white car that quickly sped off and disappeared towards Cade's Cove. This is where the wild man theories had really come into play. But why on earth would a wild man or a Bigfoot jump into a car? It just doesn't make any sense. And some think the disappearance was actually a kidnapping even a kidnapping put on by the government itself. Very, very weird. Now I've spent a lot of time in the mountains on my own and most of the hikes I do are solo trips where I spend multiple nights by myself. I often think of these cases and imagine what I would do if I came face to face with a Sasquatch creature, only to have it try and carry me away into the unknown depths of the Rockies. The Albert Osman case is a great example of this nightmare coming to life. I've spoken many times about Albert Osman on this channel, and about his tale of being carried off at night by a Sasquatch while still in his sleeping bag. His account of spending multiple days with a family of Bigfoot creatures is one of the most fascinating in the entire world of Bigfoot, and has been the hook that has pulled in many new Bigfoot enthusiasts. If the story is true, then it is a clear account of Bigfoot being responsible for a person going missing. Although Osman was able to make a dramatic escape and survive to tell the tale. What would these creatures want with a person? And what would be the point of snatching a human being? Would it just be a case of curiosity? Or would it be something more sinister perhaps? A Sasquatch looking for his next meal maybe? And the only way to know for sure is to be one of these victims and then live to tell the tale. The trouble is, with the majority of these missing 411 cases, the victim is never found. Strangely enough though, their personal belongings are sometimes found. And in peculiar circumstances too. As if the person just literally disappeared and left their backpack full of provisions and equipment behind. Or left random items of clothing behind. In cases where the individuals are found, they are found at what would seem to be an impossible distance away from their original location. Almost like they were picked up and placed somewhere else against their will. 
This kind of stuff leads to even wilder theories and tales of UFO encounters and alien abductions. It's also worth noting that many of the people who have mysteriously vanished have been incredibly skilled outdoorsmen. It seems strange and very out of place that they would get lost in areas that they know so well and would make very silly decisions to leave their gear behind. I know for myself, I really like to study the areas I'll be spending time in. I study maps. Not only do I study them, but I'll bring copies of them out into the field. I know where all the water sources are, and I know where the nearest roads are. The one thing though that can really throw a person off is when they get injured or hurt themselves. It can turn what was a nice stroll in the forest into a survival situation. Even things like animal attacks are not uncommon, and it seems like today more so than ever before we are seeing videos popping up online of people having run-ins with dangerous predator species, such as grizzly bears and mountain lions. These can account for a percentage of the missing people I'm sure, but they definitely don't explain the cases where the people and all evidence of their existence in the wilderness vanishes completely. People warn me all the time about being out in the mountains alone and I understand where they're coming from. I know my research areas well and I've traveled them extensively. I also have been taking special precautions when in more remote areas to ensure my safety. Such as having a GPS locator where people can track my position throughout my trip. And of course, I never like to be unprepared without a firearm. A 12 gauge loaded with buckshot for a frantic close encounter is my weapon of choice. It's better to be safe than sorry. I suppose we may never know what is causing the majority of these strange disappearances, but the Bigfoot theory could indeed be a good explanation for a lot of them. One of the wilder theories is that there are mysterious portals that exist in our wildland areas. Portals that people mysteriously wander into, in the same way that ships and aircraft go missing in the Bermuda Triangle. Some say the Sasquatch even travel through these portals, so I suppose it may be possible that it could be a combination of mysterious phenomena that is to blame. One thing is certain, and that is that I never want to be the one to find out firsthand what is going on, so hopefully nothing crazy like this ever happens when I'm out on my own. I will say this though, to all of my subscribers who plan on venturing deep into the wilderness in search of adventure and answers to the great mystery of Bigfoot, and make sure you're prepared and make sure you have a good plan for your journey. Let people know where you are and where you plan on going and when you plan on being back. I would hate to have to make a video in the future about one of you disappearing in Bigfoot territory. So that's pretty much all I have for today's video. Let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comments below. If you're wanting to support Mountain Beast Mysteries and would like to make a donation to the channel, I've set up a new GoFundMe campaign for the channel in general. The link is in the description. It's just easier and less complicated to use GoFundMe than to use PayPal for donations, so I created that page. So have a look at it in the link below. Thanks for listening to my thoughts in this video. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries.